<laughs> but literature devil good sir you happen to have a comic book that you're releasing that you're working on called doc alpha dead man's lullaby and i want you to just tell us doc alpha what's it about what are you talking about where are we going with the story how do we do I made this a prequel to my first comic book, which was Dr. Alpha Miracle Child, which people tend to like, uh, so I've heard. And then, uh, but this takes place 20 years before, so you don't have to actually read Dr. Alpha Miracle Child to understand this one, although it will enhance the, the experience. It was like, Dr. Alpha was like in his more, in like his, I would say mid 20s, something like that. He's He hasn't been a super villain for very long. Uh, so I wrote him such as such, where he, in, Dr. in Miracle Child, he's a little more methodical. Here, I put a lot of that fire and vinegar in him because he's in his 20s now. So he's going to be doing a lot of fighting. But the storyline goes, he wakes up one day from vacation. Was he on vacation from? Well, <laughs> I'll let you know later. But uh, <laughs> it's actually kind of hinted at in Miracle Child. But um, he wakes up. He's, he's in a hotel. And then he, he wakes up naked in, in his, in his uh, hotel room. He has no idea what's going on. And he wakes up turns out that one of his former colleagues another mad scientist named dr cloner uh injected him with a deadly virus and he has no idea why why would like even super villains you don't just go after another super, a super powered super villain for no reason like there's usually a reason why uh a, a villain would go after another mad scientist and he's like uh, with the so the mystery begins and, but the thing is he's been injected with this virus called the lullaby virus that is essentially supposed to be uh, explains it as the perfect assassination weapon. It's supposed to basically the thing from Crank. It kind of kills your ability mm -hmm. to to make adrenaline. Eventually, you fall asleep. So the idea was you fall asleep, uh, you just pass out, and then you die. Uh, you just your heart just stops. And so they, it's supposed to take place over a couple of weeks or so. Uh, but he gave him accelerated version. So Doctor Alpha wakes up one morning, hour left to live, and uh that's it so he's like okay you got an hour left to live we're gonna, we're gonna record your death you know we're gonna record your death record you dying so i can have it with me have it for science and stuff and take that dr alpha getting like a re revenge on you and he has like, no idea why so he goes on this crazy romp of of action he can't stop uh he has to keep his, his adrenaline up through action uh fighting adrenaline you know the adrenaline rushing things um he has to fight his way through cloner minions. He's to fight his way through superheroes. All the way, all the way through, you find an unfolding mystery of there might be some strings pull going behind the scenes here, pulling Doctor Cloner. There's, there's a manipulation going on here. There's secret agents. Uh, there's uh, double agents, triple agents. There's uh, the secrets being revealed. All kinds of things. All th things. Also, that uh, I'm kind of using this also as a world building thing. Uh, Dr. Alpha Miracle Child introduces to Dr. Alpha, the character. This one is going to be more about the world. So it's going to be more of a static main character uh, formula with an evolving world around him. So the, the world around him is going to be crazy and, and chaotic and ever evolving. You're going to get you're going to introduce to this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing. Well, Dr. Alpha himself kind of remains static. So that's kind of what you want to do in this, this situation for the most part. Uh, so. The whole thing is that his he's trying to you know like a like a meteor just go after Doctor Cloner, try to track him down, try to um, ask him what's going on, what's the secrets behind what what why is this happening in the first place? Why'd you poison me? Why'd you go through all of this uh, trouble to poison me? Because they were colleagues, they worked together. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about Doctor, if you know anything about Miracle Child, um, that that's a classic. That is a a classic trope that I am glad that you you played upon he's a, the best friends or the colleagues oh yeah, i like that yeah. that's such a great I do, like, I do like playing with tropes i do like uh getting the the old kind of like cliches and then putting together i like playing with cliches they're my favorite toys and and so but they, uh, and they should be for so many writers and they're done so badly now yeah i mean the, people kind of stay away from cliches like oh they're done they're dumb they're mm -hmm. bad no cliches mm -hmm. are not bad tropes are not bad they're there for a reason. Cliches yeah. are cliches for a reason. Uh, it the only way to make them bad is to write them badly. That's kind of it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, so, something's written badly. It is. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you know, I started off. He's. I have different points. I've made it more like a video game esque. You go from one level to the next. I uh, made as violent, oh, comically violent as possible. Like I have uh, like tugs back there. Uh, well, one point, 
I think Doctor Alpha gets a hammer, hits a hits tug so hard on the bottom of the chin, his teeth fly to the top of his skull. Like the like, scene that's passing right yeah, now. Yeah, right there. I there it goes. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> uh, I'm actually back there too as one of Cloner's minions, but I don't get killed because you know you don't kill the guy right in the paychecks. So no, no, Tug's <laughs> in the background with the hat. Tug is in the background with the hat. He's also Isn't getting hit hit with the hammer too. Oh, his oh, teeth okay. To the top of his head. Like <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought, it was dude, cool I can't Easter believe that. Oh, that's that's great i would love to meet tug one day that he's he's a super cool dude yeah he's, he's a pretty uh, cool guy uh, uh we hang out a lot and we kind of so usually we haven't missed in a while but uh we you know he's like here's a page in my comic book here's a page in my comic book things like that it's pretty cool and then uh so the april sees him there he goes down to the to the bottom of the of the he starts off on like basically the top floor of the hotel goes to the bottom of the <laughs> lobby Fights his way there, old boy style. I put all my basically I took a lot of my favorite fight scenes, put in this book. <laughs> That's kind of what happened. So there's like a hallway fight scene, old boy style. Uh the elevator, it opens up old boy style. You know, you know, he op- opens up the elevator, all these bodies fall out and stuff like that. Um and and then he goes to the kitchen, has a fight in the kitchen where Do- Dr. Clone, his girlfriend, is in there, who I kind of modeled off of the idea of a competent Harley Quinn. She's crazy. And this is her right here, actually. So you mean like, you mean like how Harley Quinn was originally in the Batman the Animated Series, where she was, you know, originally competent. created. Yeah. yeah. Except I gave her reasons why she she's really good at fighting. She's ex CIA and ex Special mm-hmm. Forces. So she's a she yeah. actually has uh, a, a a pedigree for fighting. Yeah, no, and I I, I actually I, I accept that. Like I know a lot of people in like Uncharted uh, uh, Uncharted Four. Uh, there was that chick that you know you got into a fight with with Nathan Drake, and everybody's like, "Oh, she's woke," and I'm like, "But it literally said she was ex-military," and it's just it's again, I don't mind if you're gonna write a female character who's good at fighting or who can drop a dude, give her a pedigree. Military tends to be a good pedigree because well, militaries tend to, you know, teach people how to put other people down. Well, depends what part uh, of the military. I mean, well, <laughs> sweetheart, it's the Navy. Don't you know? <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> speaking, this, this, speaking of the Navy, this actually transfers into uh, one non-serious question. One Navy. serious question. One is my first question is is wh- what? Where did the decision come in to make uh, make the dude naked for most of the <laughs> the comic? I'm just just curious. We actually changed that because it was a problem apparently, but. Uh, uh, he's well first of all he's dr alpha so uh, if you give him if you leave him with pretty much anything there's a chance he can use it to escape or something so that's kind of why okay. he was naked i was like there's no way in fact there's a there's a, a scene or a panel in the beginning of the comic book where they're looking underneath the bed and I have an indention there i'm wanting to put, like have my colorist r- draw in like a transparent box to say like oh this was there but isn't anymore um there's gonna have stratagos on it something like that just stratagos or oh. something else will be added in here the doc, this this book is going to go into Doctor Alpha's past. Uh, some potential reveals of things that are going to be revealed. But I'm not going to tell you what they mean. Stuff like that. So a lot of seeds for future stories, things like that. But um, it's like either he found his emergency box of of uh, goodies and something like that. It keeps around just in case something bad happens. Stole that. Stole his clothes. Stole everything. Everything's gone. Yeah. And so because he knows that if he leaves anything with Doctor Alpha, he there's a chance that he'll use it to escape or take his revenge something like that he i mean in this book he uses an ice bucket to help himself to help himself beat up all the bad guys so i mean anything in dr devil's hands could be potentially very very dangerous and uh, that. that's kind of where it is with his power level like he seems like he's really good at everything he's over top but with what we see with mulvion in the first one and we see with dr cloner in this one he's actually a jack of all trades he's like a he's good at a, at a lot of things but he's not really a master of anything he's good at a lot of things but not a master Pretty of anything. Standard. The, the, what makes him so dangerous, what makes him one of the most dangerous uh, villains in the galaxy is his, able, his ability to, to strategize and outmaneuver mm-hmm. people. And we'll go into that skill in this book when we go into his background, reveal what his background was before he turned evil. Interesting. So I'm, I'm curious, is this, um, and that was kind of, I was just, you know, thinking about the Navy and it naturally seemed to flow in that direction <laughs> conversation wise. Well, um, yeah. So uh, aside from his background in the Navy, no, not really. But uh, <laughs> um, what uh, are you going to go any farther into his past or or what do you like? 
what's your vision for the the future of the series? It sounds like you have a lot planned out. Oh, I mean, yeah. I know you're still working quite, on this one. I don't want to, whatever, but quite a few. This one's gonna be two volumes because I decided to crack the, the story in half, so it can be oh, more yeah. pages. And I can still have that robust story without having to rush because I was, I had the whole page, the whole series, the whole um, Dead Man's Alibi story complete. But towards the end, I really started to rush because I was getting towards a hundred pages or so, and uh, or more. And I was like, ah, this, I can't afford this. <laughs> I just can't afford yeah. this. So I decided, you know what? It's a hard decision, but I decided to crack it in half into two volumes. That way, I can have the full story. Things don't feel so rushed. Because I, I felt that way with Miracle Child. Miracle Child is 112 pages. I felt like it, it needed like another few, maybe 10 or so, uh, maybe 20, uh, to get the whole uh, feel of everything I want to put in there. So I didn't want to do that again. I wanted to make sure that there's room for everything that I can add in everything I wanted to in this book. So unfortunately, the the solution to this was to crack it in half. So volume one, volume two. But I don't plan any more volumes than that. Like it's two two volumes for this story for the Dead Man's Lullaby storyline, and then uh, then volume three is going to go right back to what happens after Miracle Child, and where okay. where he ended up there and stuff like that. So we're going to head there. And but uh, Dead Man's Lullaby is not going to just not only going to tell the story of Dead Man's Lullaby of Doctor Alpha trying to you know get to Doctor Cloner, but also explores his past. And it also introduces a lot of characters and concepts and thing, other things that are going to be important later, like the Oculus mm -hmm. Limited uh, company that sells super villains, and su super weapons, and super villains, uh, the agents who work there, uh, Stratagos, which is another entity, um, and then a mysterious behind the scenes entity that might be pulling the strings and things like that. So. A lot of things to add. Thank you all for being here on A Drink With Crazy. If you guys never want to miss a notification for the channel, go down in the link in the description and click that button to follow me and support me over on Locals. It's free to join, but that's where you can support me with money if you so choose. Also, don't forget to click those Rumble and Odyssey links so that way we can get over there and keep that growing. And until next time, cheers, everybody.